So kind of continuing on with this issue of um, infamy of the Roman Empire, right? We, we, we need to talk about the accomplishment of the Roman Empire. We also not need to talk about some problems that it had. Uh, one aspect is, of course, Roman family life. Uh, Rome was very patriarchal. Women basically were either under the control of their fathers or their husbands and had very few rights. Um, in much of the Roman, during much of Roman history, the father actually had the power of life or death over his children. So I want to stress, this is a very patriarchal culture. We've already seen some aspects of that. I just wanted to, to emphasize that. And you can especially see that patriarchal nature of that in how baby girls were treated and just how children could be treated in general. So one aspect, like I said, the, the, um, it's the patriarchal system where the father has power. He could order the abandonment of children. So, you know, a woman may give birth to a child and he could order that the child would be, could be abandoned, uh, left alone on like a mountaintop or something like that. And while it was hoped that someone would pick up the child, a lot of times this was basically infanticide. The baby, the child would simply die of exposure or be eaten by wild animals, uh, which is just really terrible to think about. But he had this kind of power. And this was also tied to issues of gender. So there's a very interesting letter written by a Roman husband who's traveling. He's out on a business trip, basically. He writes this really wonderful letter to his wife, and it's a very loving, affectionate letter to his wife. Um, and she's pregnant. And in the midst of all this, you know, he's like, how are you doing? I hope you're okay. I hope you're in good health. He says, you know, if you give birth while I'm away, if the baby is a boy, keep it. If the baby is a girl, expose her, meaning abandon her. So that's definitely kind of a patriarchal system, right? If you're a boy, you get to live. If you're a girl here, you're going to be abandoned. Now you may say, well, why would you want to abandon a girl? And it has to do with the way Roman marriage worked. In Roman marriage, a woman left her, fam her family and joined the husband's family and was expected to bring a dowry with her. She was expected to bring money with her. So obviously, when someone gets married... The boy's family wins, the girl's family loses, right? If I have a daughter and she gets married, she brings money out of my house to her husband's house. If I have a son and he gets married, though, yay for me, you're going to have these girls uh, bringing money into my house. So the ideal Roman family was typically two boys and one girl. You need two boys, so you have a spare. And they still wanted girls, right? They still, you know, loved girls. But because of this economic issue, they oftentimes, despite, you know, having a love for their daughters, at least when they were older, they would choose to abandon their daughters out of economic interest, right? Because girls make you poorer. So being, like I said, being humans, of course, they loved their children, um, but not so much that they were willing to accept economic losses if they had too many girls so like i said this is pretty dark stuff uh we'll talk more about this later this is going to be very important for the rise of christianity now i need to talk um, about one figure a woman named Boudica, who i think brings these things together who can kind of help us understand the dual nature of the roman empire that was something that was both glorious and something that was also infamous to give you some background before I talk to her, the woman's name is Boudica, by the way. Before we get to Boudica, I just want to point out that the Romans, as I mentioned earlier, are going to, uh, under Julius Caesar, they'll conquer um, what they called Gaul, but which is basically a big chunk of France. And they would use that as a base to invade Britain. And Caesar would actually conquer a part of Britain. And here's an example. The, this is There's, I believe, Caesar up there leading his troops against the British tribes. Now, there was a British queen named Boudicca. Now, what's complicated, remember, Britain during this time period is not a single government with, like, one king. It is divided into multiple tribal kingdoms. 
so basically large very large tribes so large that they had like a king or a queen and some of these tribes of course when the romans invade oppose the romans because the romans are invading but other tribes support the romans why well if your tribe is a weaker tribe and has been being bullied by other tribes the romans show up they're powerful allies you know, I'm getting beaten up by my neighbors. The Romans show up. They want allies. I'll work with the Romans because those guys are tough. They'll protect me and make me stronger. And wow, these Romans have a great civilization. They take baths. They um, live in these beautiful marble palaces rather than a hill fort made of wood like I do. So if I support the Romans, I get security and access to Roman civilization. So when the Romans invade... You know, you've got this Britain divided into multiple tribal kingdoms. Some will oppose the Romans. Others will work with the Romans. And Boudicca, the, this queen, her husband, the king of their uh, tribal kingdom, are going to support Rome. They are eager to support Rome. And they take full advantage of the Roman offers of security as well as Roman civilization. Now, here's what's going to happen, though. Boudicca's husband will die. And he doesn't have any sons. That's not a big deal for the, the Britons, though. They're not so patriarchal. What would normally happen is Boudicca would become queen in her own right. And then the um, title could be passed to her daughters. Romans don't are not so patriarchal as... I'm sorry, the Britons are not so patriarchal as the Romans. So she's going to go to the Romans and say, you know, my husband has died. He was an ally. We've been loyal to you. I just want you to confirm me in my queenship and, you know, everything with my daughters. So hope that's okay. And she just thought this would be something that the Romans would be fine with. And the Romans were not fine with it. The Romans said, oh, you're a girl. We don't recognize you inheriting the kingdom. Guess what? Your kingdom is now ours. You're no longer Roman ally. Your kingdom is now a part of the empire. And just to show her who was in charge, and I this is disgusting, but please bear with me, they whipped her, and then the Romans raped her daughters, uh, who I believe were teenagers, in front of her, just to prove the point that the Romans were in charge. Like I say, infamous. <laughs> you know, this, I, this is just really terrible. Um, both intrinsically, but also, I mean, this this is the way you treat an ally? So what will happen then is Boudicca, quite understandably, launches a massive rebellion against the Romans. And initially it's very successful. She destroys a Roman army. She kills a lot of Roman civilians. She um, is receiving a lot of support for other Britons who are frustrated by bad Roman behavior. But in the end... Just like the rebellion of Spartacus, the Romans will put together a large army and will crush her and her rebellion. So, like I say, the Romans are, are both glorious and infamous, right? Capable of producing marvelous engineering feats good administration, peace, security, increasing prosperity, but also this, this terrible treatment of people, this, this terrible cruelty that can cause rebellion. Now, there's one last rebellion we need to talk about. It's very important historically, um, but we need to talk about the so-called Jewish revolt. Um, we'll talk more about this when we talk about the rise of Christianity and Jesus, but the uh, Roman Empire also included Judea. They also conquered Jerusalem. And they had a complex relationship with Jewish people. Um, the Romans couldn't quite figure them out, didn't quite get monotheism, but were willing to put up with it. But at times, various Romans put pressure on Jewish people, were not um, respectful to their religious sensibilities. So, for example, there were attempts by Romans to put pagan symbols in the temple, which Jewish people naturally did not like. So... Um, there were large numbers of Jewish people who said, we want the Romans out. We want an independent Jewish kingdom. And the year 66, they would rebel. But by the year 70, 
they were utterly defeated. Right? They're going to be utterly defeated by the Romans. There you can see the Romans carrying away the treasures that would have been in the temple. Uh, incidentally, th this is a picture I took. Um, when, and I'll mention this later, but you may recall when we did the section on Egypt, I said how my dad had taken me on a trip to the Holy Land um, and we went to the Wailing Wall. This isn't actually part of the temple, but this was part of, this was a retaining wall um, that held back the earth and the temple would have been up here. The reason, and so the temple's gone now. I want to stress, the Romans destroyed the temple. The temple should be here. It's not, right? So the temple got destroyed by the Babylonians. Uh, the Hebrews rebuilt it. It got destroyed by again by the Romans. The Hebrews were not able to rebuild it. And you, you don't see it very well here, but see that golden mosque? That's the Dome of the Rock. That's a very important Islamic mosque. That's where the temple used to be. So in order to rebuild the temple, they'd have to knock down the mosque, which, of course, Muslims oppose. So there's no temple. And this will lead, then, the destruction of Jerusalem and this rebellion. I should say the destruction of Jerusalem. Much of Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was certainly destroyed. And the Romans said at this point, all Jewish people have to leave Jerusalem. And this is what's going to lead to what we call the Jewish diaspora, where Jews are going to, to spread out throughout uh, the Middle East and throughout Europe and into Africa as well. But I, I thought, since we're dealing with the such a rebellion, we need to talk about what ended up happening to the uh, temple and to the Jewish people. And one reason they spread out of Israel was because they were forced to by the Romans uh, after this rebellion.